Well, I mean, we we talked about this in some prior tweets that we had. Um, you know, on September 23rd, we put something out saying, look, it makes zero sense to us that with a trade war, attack on oil free yields, Hong Kong protests, Brexit, et cetera, that the market's up here, um, given what the bond market's doing. And, and so, you know, we were pretty negative then. Well, as the market started to slide, obviously, over the last three weeks, the S&P has been down every single week. Um, our view was, you know, we're getting close to a bottom. We put out a tweet actually on Wednesday saying, look, we've covered our entire S&P short. What's the biggest, you know, stock in the S&P? That's obviously Apple. And so, you know, during this uh, recent slide, we bought that, figuring the market's, you know, going to bounce. Apple should go with it. But we're actually a lot more positive on the suppliers to Apple in the uh, supply chain than we actually are on Apple itself, because I think that's where the real disconnect is. Mm-hmm. And this report this morning from the Nikkei that supposedly they're asking suppliers to increase, you know, that has more to do with the disconnect between inventory and revenues, I think, um, than anything else. So we think those companies will actually benefit a lot more than even Apple. So which companies specifically in that report out of Nikkei indicated that the suppliers were reluctant to actually increase production because they weren't really sure that this demand would would actually be there? That is the exact comment that people should be focused on that you just made. Because here's the thing. Go back to a year ago. Apple stock hit an all-time record high in early October, and the company, you know, sounded pretty bullish. And then I think we all remember what happened in December. And by the way, in early October, we had a trade war going on with China. And a lot of other companies that were affected by the trade war were getting clobbered, but somehow investors chose to ignore that and keep buying Apple. So I think here's the, here are the raw numbers. If you look at Apple, their March quarter revenues were down 5% year over year. By June, that had gone to up one, which isn't great, great obviously, but it's better than negative five. If you look at their inventories, however, their inventories, including non-trade receivables, went from plus 2% in March to minus 14 in June. So if you were supplying into Apple between March and June, your business got absolutely hammered, which, in fact, we saw. So what you're seeing today, back to the comment you just made, that's why the suppliers are reticent, because last September... They were being begged by Apple to give them tons of components, and then 90 days later, Apple blows up, and Apple's, you know, getting rid of all this inventory. And so that's why, obviously, the suppliers are reluctant. And don't forget, Apple doesn't have 5G phones. 